All right, guys, welcome back. I've got something a little different for you today. Um, as I was scrolling through Amazon and I got to thinking, let's look at some home audio stuff because to be honest, I don't think I've ever mentioned this on a channel, but I've always kind of been into home audio a little bit as well. Uh, just to give you an example, I've got an Onkyo receiver and some, some decent speakers out here in the garage. It's a pretty nice system for a garage. Um, in the house, I have another Onkyo on some uh, Serwin Vega 12s that are in some uh, cabinets. Um, my son has a Yamaha receiver. He's got some Dayton audio stuff. So yeah, we've always fooled with a little bit of home audio as well. But um, just to switch things up a little bit, I started looking around for some home audio receivers on Amazon to see what I could find. And I was pretty surprised to come across this one. Um, I'll later in the video, I'll, I'll let you guys know exactly what I paid for this, but I want to say this thing was like $69. And from what I was seeing, it was the top rated, uh, home audio receiver. And this isn't just fully a home audio receiver. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's kind of a dual purpose type of deal, but, um, four and a half stars and over 3000 ratings. Um, but I was like, wow, uh, people must really like that thing. I don't know. Let's check it out. I don't think anybody's done any um, dyno videos on this. We're going to see what kind of output this thing gives you in uh, real world um, RMS on some resistors. And we may hook it up to a couple of speakers too. Might put it on a couple of those little Dayton's, Dayton audios that my son's got. But anyhow, this is the um, Moki or Malki. I'll be honest with you, I don't even actually know how to say it. Um, I'm not familiar with this brand, but there's a MAMP1. I've not even opened this yet, guys. Y'all are going to watch me open it up on camera. It's small for a home audio receiver. If you haven't noticed already, that is not the standard size for a home audio receiver, but... Let's see here what we get. Okay, all right, so cool. Right out of the gate, we've got a remote. <clears throat> it looks like a antenna and some uh, owner's manual. The empty bag there. That antenna or remote one is probably supposed to be in that bag. All right, and then here we have a receiver. Let's take it out of here. Uh-oh. Wow, that box is coming apart. A little on the easy side. <clears throat> All right. Let's see what we've got here. Okay. Wow. Pretty cool little handy size. Check that out. Get it out of the plastic here. I know y'all probably hate this part of the video. Um, some of you may like it. Uh, but let's see. I'll try to make it as quick as possible. Okay. Wow. Nice fit and finish. I'll be honest with you. It looks as good as any other home audio receiver nice and smooth they got just enough resistance um check this out usb right in the front sd card right in the front wow really cool all right so you'll see right here digital karaoke amplifier so this is it'll do both um it's it's easily set up for to use uh, for karaoke and it also has all the right inputs and such for you know to be used for just home audio here's dvd cd line out here's the speaker outs you've got a uh, it's two channel uh, right and left positive and negative speaker impedance we're going to talk about this more here in a minute 
four ohms to 16 ohms. So I'm assuming right out of the gate, the lowest this thing is able to go is four ohm stereo. No issues with that. That's um, pretty standard for home audio. Um, look at this peak power. So 220 watts. So we're already looking at some max power type ratings. I don't know. Um, anyhow, so this is going to be really cool. Uh, I've got something else that I am super excited about uh, showing you guys on the channel today. Uh, <clears throat> so make, make sure you stay tuned a little bit longer because um, it's something that is going to be cool and beneficial and helpful on the channel from now on. Something that I've added to the test bench is what I'm talking about. So, uh, so stay tuned for that. Let's, um, let me look through the manual and all that and we'll get this thing hooked up and we'll talk about it and look at some of the features a little bit more. This is not going to be a super in-depth review showing everything you can hook up to it, Bluetooth and my phone to it. I'm not, this isn't going to be one of those kind of videos. We could make this video an hour long if we wanted to go through every little feature <clears throat> that this thing has. Um, this is just a, an overview and an amp dyno. We want to play with it a little bit and we want to see what kind of output we can get out of this thing. See what kind of power. All you people out there that are buying this thing, I'm sure y'all are pretty interested to know how much power does this actually put out. That's, that's a little bit more about what this video is going to be about. All right, so stay tuned. All right, guys, I've been playing with this thing <laughs> for a little while and I'll be honest with you, I'm having a ball. Uh, this little thing is so fun and um, intuitive. I don't know. It's simple. Um, we'll get into some of that here in a second. But here's what we've got in the manual as far as ratings here at the top. Look at that. Peak power, 110 by 2. And then RMS power, 25 by 25. We're going to test that here in a little bit. It doesn't talk about the ohm loads. I'm assuming that's 25 watts for each channel at four ohms uh we're definitely going to check that out we're probably going to do um one kilohertz only and we're probably going to do an eight ohm test and a four ohm test uh probably a sine wave and uh dynamic as well but wanted you guys to see the ratings there 25 by 25 there's some of the other some of the other specs um it does have uh it does accept banana plugs on the back which is how i've got it wired up i love banana plugs on stuff like this um they're so easy and handy these are the dayton audio b652 airs um gosh these things are some great little bookshelves and i'll be honest with you they're they're a awesome match for this thing um but these are only uh Fifty nine ninety eight currently on uh, Parts Express. I'm not affiliated with any of these companies. I don't get a kickback. I don't have affiliate links or anything. But I'm just letting you know what we've got and what we paid for them. Um, but these are six and a halves and a little air. Uh, gosh, what do they call that? An air ribbon tweeter? I don't know. But you can get this model with a regular tweeter. But this little air ribbon tweeter... Um, is what most people said sounds the best. We've had these things for a couple of years now, but they are awesome. They sound extremely good for $59. And uh, like I said, what a great matchup for the little Moki or Malky M-A-M-P-1. Um, let's listen to it a little bit. I know I'm doing this backwards from normal. We're going to do the uh, listening first, and then we're going to get to the amp dynos uh, here in a second. But everything is so intuitive on this thing it's simple it's easy to navigate through the little bit that i've done with it so far wanted to show you guys this when i turn it on i'm gonna have to hit pause but look at that it's so friendly it even tells you hi when you turn it on um but this thing being so versatile so look you've got a headphone jack a microphone one microphone two 
Here's a couple of adjustments for your mics. I've got those all the way on zero. For my listening and the dynos, um, I've got the bass on zero, the treble on zero, the balance in the middle. Um, it has auxiliary inputs, DVD, CD, um, SD, USB. So think about this. Um, just a home audio receiver. If, uh, if you don't need something big and with a lot of power, um, if you're hosting a party or something and you can even plug in some mics, if you need to talk a little bit, depending on what you're doing, um, uh, karaoke, but just so, just so versatile. Um, anyhow, I'm rambling. I'm rambling way too much. Let's listen to this thing. To me, it sounds really good. Part of that is due to these um, these bookshelf speakers uh, because they sound so good. But what a great matchup right here. You could have this system. Oh, I also looked up what I paid for the little Moki or Malky. Uh, $69.99 on Amazon. And then with tax, it came out to $75.59. So a home audio receiver that does as much as this thing does for well under a hundred dollars but think about if you was to buy this and these speakers um you'd be at i don't know what would you be at about a hundred and fifty dollars probably probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 shipped for such a great little system you could put this in uh i don't know your living room a bedroom the garage and as cheap as this is, it could be a second system or a third system or whatever. Um, anyhow. All right. So let's get to the stuff that you guys really wanted to see. And that's the amp dynos. So stay tuned for just a second. Let's get this thing hooked up to some resistors. Let's see what kind of output we get out of it. We're going to see that 25 watts um, by two. I don't know. Let's see. Sit tight. All right, guys. Are y'all ready for the surprise? Bam. How about two AMM ones? This is really going to help us a lot on the channel when we're doing, we can do two channels at the same time. So when doing a two channel amp, I can test both channels. When doing a four channel amp, I can bridge down to two, make it a two channel amp and test the entire output of the amp all at the same time. Instead of just having, you know, half of the amp wired down to resistors, um, well, they're, they're, they'll both be wired down to resistors, but you know what I'm saying? Only only testing half of the output of the amplifier. So this is something I'm really excited about. This is the very first uh, amp that I'm trying this on. In fact, I just cut this thing on for the first time about, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes ago. So anyhow, what we're going to do here is a uh, one kilohertz um, sine wave. And we are wired at eight ohms. Remember, this thing is, is 25 by 25 RMS is what it's rated. But it is rated to go down to four ohms. And we're wired at eight ohms. So let's see what it does at um, eight ohms. Huh. 
All right, 20 and 20. How about that? Um, so keep in mind, this is only eight ohms. We're, we're fixing to go to four ohms. I think that looks pretty promising that we'll see that RMS rating of 25 by 25, but you just never know. Um, some amplifiers are different and they just don't give you that much more power when you go a little lower, but typically do, especially when you're within the range of what it's rated for. So, all right, let's uh, let's reconfigure this on the resistors and see what kind of output we can get at, uh, at four ohms. All right, guys, we're wired at four ohms now. Let's see what this thing's gonna do. One kilohertz, four ohms. Um, how about my very first run ever on the two AMM1s? Gave us the same exact output, by the way. That was really cool to see. All right, here we go. One kilohertz wired to four ohms. What's it gonna do? Oh, 28 and 26. Guys, that did come out to 3.9 ohms, but these, I, I am wired to four ohm resistors right now. Um, how about this little thing doing it's RMS power. Now they have given this thing a max power rating of 220, which is a lot, uh, but it does have RMS ratings in the book um, of 25 by 25. And it just, it just did that. Um, I forgot, let's do, uh, let's do dynamically four ohms. Oh, wow. Okay. It's got a little extra in it for sure. Wow. Okay. Cool. So that was one kilohertz dynamic hooked to four ohms, 47 watts and 46 watts. All right, guys, if you don't need anything with a lot of power, um, this will get you done, especially with just like a couple of bookshelf speakers. Um, that is plenty of power to run a couple of bookshelf speakers like those two little Dayton audios. Um, yeah, you wouldn't want to put this thing on subwoofers or, or something like that. Um, but what a great matchup for a couple of bookshelf speakers. So really neat to do something different, guys. Like I said, I am also interested in home audio stuff as well. Um, let me get... Let, uh, Listen to me getting tongue-tied. Guys, let me know what you think about this little thing. Let me know what you think about adding the second AMM1. And let me know what you think about me getting some more head units. I wouldn't mind getting a couple of regular full-size head units. Um, like maybe, you know, like that Yamaha that my son's got. It's just a two-channel. I've got two Onkyos that are also just two channels. Those things are, uh, they're all rated, let's see, one of my Onkyos is rated 100, nope, one of them's rated 50 by two, and one of them's rated 100 by two, and I think my son's Yamaha is 100 by two, if I'm thinking right. I don't know, but let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing the output of some home audio receivers. All right, guys, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, stay tuned on the channel, got some cool stuff coming up. Uh, especially since we have the second AMM one now. So we're going to probably get involved with some, some four channel amps too. So stay tuned. Please consider subscribing as always guys. Thanks for watching. All right. I always think of something else that I want to say after I, after I turned the camera off for the last time, I talked about what a great matchup this was for these two little Dayton's. And then after I turned the camera off, I was like, yeah, let me look at the ohm load. Uh, and I realized, well, there's a sticker right on the back. So check this out. Uh, recommended power, five watts to 40 watts and uh, impedance six ohms. So yeah, an even better matchup than what I was probably thinking because we're right in the middle there with the ohm load and we're right in the middle there on the wattage. Um, in fact, that dynamic number put us up, you know, up at the max there on that end so yeah great little matchup but if but if anybody else was also wanting to know the exact model number and um specs on these little datings there they are 
All right, guys. Hey, thanks for watching.